Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Saturday, March 13th, 2021 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is, I allow myself to be moved by my soul's higher guidance. And today we have new moon in Pisces. So happy new moon. Um, I want to start by saying thank you for everybody who replied, uh, responded to uh, if there was any interest in doing a class around these feelings, going deeper into feelings, understanding them through astrology, I really feel like I'm going to make a group, um, do a group with overall lessons and then individual ses sessions as well. That's how I feel like we can get the most from this energy. So please, if you haven't responded, let me know. And I'm going to be figuring out the timing and all of that coming very soon. But please keep letting me know if you are interested. And I'm really excited to put this out there. So let's dig into this astro. Oh my goodness. As I look at the chart sitting in front of me, we have a strong collaboration of energies. We have Venus and Neptune and the sun and moon really all within like five degrees of each other. So really walk, working very strongly together. Um, so let's start with the new moon energy. New moon is when the sun and the moon are working in tangent at the same degree. They are at 23 degrees. So that is five energy. So five energy is an energy around change and it's an energy to me around communication and listening. It connects with Mercury in astrology. And so we really do want to be listening paying attention and noticing what's going on. So whether this is noticing the signs being sent to us from the universe, or it's also noticing like our higher self trying to get our attention, or even, you know, connecting to North Node in Gemini, um, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening in the world? So paying attention to that as we move forward. That being said, dark of the moon in Pisces, it is like the darkest of the dark moons. This is you know, us finishing up this astrological year. This astrological year, admittedly, was pretty crazy, pretty intense. And so there just may be karmic energies, feelings, all kinds of things around that, you know, coming up to be processed in this dark of the moon. So this is definitely a call to take it easy. That being said, even as we're taking it easy, allowing ourselves to daydream and allowing ourselves to hold the vision, there is that really strong magic. And the Sabian symbol for this new moon, 23 degrees, actually is a materializing medium giving a seance. So this isn't necessarily to me a call for us to like, you know, do a seance, connect to those who have passed. Um... Yeah, not really feeling that call in this energy. Rather, to me, it's like the materializing medium part. It really is making the connection to what we think and what we daydream and what we do in the invisible and how it comes down and makes itself manifest in the visible. There is a connection, which is why so many do emphasize the work on that spiritual realm in order to manifest in the physical. I also think it's really interesting uh, to look at the next Sabian symbol for Pisces 24 because 23 degrees, right? It's it's in the mo in the momentum moving towards 24. So 24 on a small small island surrounded by the vast expanse of the sea, people are seen seen living in close interaction, and this reminds us to or reminds me of the energy of the, the web of life, how we are all connected. We're even all connected as we manifest, as we connect. And so I always like to add when it comes to manifestation for the highest and best of all. Now I've said this in Astro a lot of times before, but I think it bears repeating. I do believe that when we are aligned on our soul path, when we are aligned and listening to our higher guidance, that the steps we take and the things that we manifest and how we do our work does support the highest and best of everyone. But I think that is an intentional energy to connect in with, to support ourselves, to support, to support uh, the world, to support that web of life connection that is is in the all. Now this, like I said, this energy feels super magical um, as there is so much energy packed all in. And even though we have this new moon, which is encouraging us to set intentions, plant those seeds for our incoming astrological new year, 
right? We're about we're about a week out from our astrological new year. So counting down these days. Um, uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> well, okay, that's what I was saying. Even though it's quite magical in the making, there is still karmic energy to be processed. And there still is the energy of the unknown. And I want to emphasize that because I've had many people approach me like, oh, I'm feeling very anxious. Again, like I said in yesterday's scope, we as humans tend to get anxious when we are facing the unknown, when we are kind of floating, when we're being encouraged to trust and yet we don't have anything solid, <laughs> physical, that we're putting our feet on at this time. So do realize that's part of the energies that we're working with. I also want to say for those who are also feeling the anxious energies, um, Mercury is finishing up in Aquarius. In fact, Mercury is moving out of the shadow energy. Woohoo, finally. Um, and we'll be shifting into Pisces in just a few days. But with Mercury at these, um, at these final degrees of Aquarius, the electrical energies are quite intense at this time. So part of the advice I've been giving is to ground in and connect, like feel the ground underneath you. Even if you feel like you're in a state of unknown in the world, feel the ground supporting you, holding you, and trust in that, right? Um, let's see what else. Ooh, this Neptune-Venus conjunction. So this is really interesting and goes back to what I was saying about this being a major time of karmic release and karmic completion. So Neptune and Venus. Venus can represent relational energies. And as it connects to Neptune, which connects us to multi dimensions and time and space and the fact there is no really time, um, we may have past lives or other lifetimes, those connections popping up as we complete these karmic cycles. So do be aware of any, whether it's issues in relationship or any interesting relationship energies popping up that there may have karmic pieces. And this goes hand in hand with the fact that we just had Venus connecting in with the south node. So don't be alarmed if you're processing something that feels old or if it comes up to be, you know, rehashed again. Yeah, it's deep. And maybe we're getting, you know, a a deeper cut of the roots this time to pull up and release. At the same time, I'm also getting the message. It's so funny because my cards just kind of jumped and this one was sitting on top. The receptivity card. Pleasure as an inherent spiritual concept. Now there are those religions or um, philosophies that believed in deterring oneself from pleasure or pleasure and desire and the negative energies that they may carry. I don't personally have that belief. And to me, this connection between Neptune and Venus is like, do, like, do enjoy the pleasures of the universe. Let yourself receive. Notice where maybe you are denying yourself. And I don't mean denying yourself in a, you know, to choose something better for yourself or to choose something healthy for yourself. But where are you shutting down like those desires, this calling of your heart or the longing of your heart? Where are you being called to work with that energy as part of your own personal divine and spiritual nature? Where are you being asked to open yourself up to receive in this energy? So that Venus Neptune energy has some strong uh, potency for us in regards to that as well. Besides this, um, it is an overall quiet day. The moon will be finishing up in Pisces as the moon finishes up in Pisces. Now, if you just heard the cat race through here, <laughs> she's she's feeling this moon um, and honking. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> we will have the moon connecting to Pluto. So again, I'm feeling this in regards to, oh gosh, in regards to all of these energies, finding that harmony, finding the harmony between your mind and your heart in regards to that which you desire, in regards to that which you want to receive. And here, right in the midst of these cards, we have the magician card, still using the power of your daydream, the power of your illusion, the power of your mind to align and allow yourself to be open to receive. That being said, like I said, we're finishing up. We're finishing up 
this last astrological year, which you think about it, was when we entered this astrological new year that stuff really got kind of crazy last year in 2020, right? So change is incoming and yet we have this patience card in reverse. We may be feeling very impatient as these changes take place, but what you can do is work your personal magic. You are being called to work your personal magic and even receive the benefits of your personal magic in and through this energy. So keep that in mind. Be empowered through that. Again, it doesn't mean you have to have a busy day. Take it easy, but be empowered. Finally, the moon will be shifting into Aries, 3.44 p.m. Chances are a lot of lazy catting. Here, we're in Colorado right now. Oh my goodness, they're saying we may get up to like three feet of snow. <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> but we will probably be lazy catting as the snowstorm moves in and through. Moon into Aries definitely may kick things up a notch. And like I said, do ground in and connect because between Moon and Aries and this, um, what am I looking at? The final degrees of Mercury moving through uh, Aquarius, it could be a little bit stimulating. So make sure that you're grounding in and connecting to support your nervous system. So that's it for today. You can book a reading with me. Email me, mimiclark at gmail.com. Besides that, the better it gets, the better it gets. There's more than enough love in the world for you. You have the power and stay curious. Namaste.